warning, the following podcast, which contains strong language and mature content, is unsuitable for children or for the faint of heart. The subject matter discussed will be frightening and graphic in nature. Listener discretion is advised. When you want to hear about the paranormal, you get the spooked girls. True crime that makes you hypothermal with the three spooked girls. Stabby snippets will give you dreams. Tara and Jessica will make you. Along with the spooked girls Bring on the slaughter girls. We on that haunted ground spooked girls. The three spooked girls Hey Spooksters and welcome back to another episode here on Three Spooked Girls. My name is Tara and as always I'm here with my girlfriend Jessica. Hello. Hello. And today, as you can see by the title, we are going to be talking about some haunted national parks. Because when I was thinking up stuff for Summerween, I was like, what's something that also reminds me of summer that's a little different? And I was like, road trips, going to national parks. So many people do that. So of course, Mm -hmm. they're basically all haunted. Let's be real. Like, I would be shocked if there's one that isn't haunted. (laughs) (laughs) So I've got I've got a list of some that we're going to talk about today. And if you guys have any experiences yourself that you would like to share, you should definitely email those into threespookedgirls at gmail.com because we are going to be having listeners episodes come back this month and into spooky season, of course. But if you are new here and you're not hanging out with us on social media, you can find us everywhere. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, Twitter, X, whatever, all the places. Our handle is at Three Spooked Girls. And we have our amazing Facebook group. And that's Three Spooked Girls Official. Secret Satan is going to be coming up. Mm -hmm. It is getting closer to the end of July. Holy fuck. I know. (laughs) And it's so funny because when you think about it, people go, well, it's in October. And you're like, yeah, but you got to start this shit. You got to start announcing it in like August. You got to have everything done by like the middle of September so that people can get shit out. Yes. And this year, I'm t- I'm going to be very honest. I'm taking zero attitude and zero fucks. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, I'm going to lay down the hammer for a second, <laughs> I, which I rarely do here. So last year was our biggest participation year to date. Mm-hmm. Obviously, as you know, we're growing and we find more of you guys and what have you. The thing is, though, there was a lot more than there should have been of people ghosting, of only getting... They- their packages and not mailing anything out. And that's just really fucked up. And there was so many people, there was no way financially Jess and I and even the mod team could take care of everything because years prior, it would be like maybe one or two, like definitely less than five most of the time. So like, of Mm -hmm. course, those like we pretty much just each took someone and, you know, sent them something. But it was a lot more this year. And I know over the grand scheme of like the total number of participants, it wasn't a lot, but it shouldn't be any. It was definitely around like 10% of of individuals. Yeah. People just weren't participating in, or just responding. Like, And then, then it would be like, hey, we're going to kick you out of the Facebook group. And then we'd get a reply back like, oh, I'm really sorry. Like, I'm having blah, blah, blah. We're not begging this year. Like, I'm sorry. We no. just, we don't have the capacity for one. And two, like, we're all adults, man. We announced this so early. Like, dude, y'all know the stores are putting out Halloween stuff now. Pick up a thing here. Pick up a thing there. Like, if you really want to participate is what I'm saying. Like, you know, incorporate it however you got to do it. Like, what have you or Mm -hmm. if it's like something obviously like emergencies happen crazy shit in life happens and we've had that happen before and it's like those people have been responsible been like hey x y and z is happening so i'm so sorry i cannot participate totally fine because if we have some notice then we can pick it up or you know we always have you guys are so amazing every year i'm gonna have to put timestamp when this actual episode starts sorry but i feel like this had to be said like address now Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know there's so many generous spooksters because we always have people being like hey i can take a second one or hey if anyone doesn't get their stuff let us know like you guys are fucking amazing you guys are amazing and and thank you for that yeah we appreciate you because i 
I'm pretty sure once we started asking like other people to help us, like I feel like we got we got quite a bit of people taken care of for sure. If you can't, I know it sucks, but like just don't sign up then, I guess. We do smaller stuff throughout the year as well, where it's like a five or ten dollar limit. And if that's more obtainable, like just come do that then. Cause you know, we definitely do those. Yeah. And it honestly, since I I'm the one who who runs it. It really like last year, I was like, I'm done. We're not doing this again because of just how defeated I felt. I'm going to be honest. The other thing was I was really honest and transparent being like, hey, guys, I'm doing this on my own. And like, I have work and I'm trying to do this. Mm -hmm. And you were like, when do I get my person? Hey, I haven't received an email. Like, give it a few days. Like, not like I said, it would be out like this, like September, the weekend of September 15th. I think it was last year. And it was like September 15th at 8 a.m. Hey, I didn't get my email. Like, I'm gonna be real honest. Like, please calm down because like it's done manually and it makes us not want to do these things. And being transparent, like if it goes the way it did last year, this is the last Secret Satan. I'm not going to put our mods through it. No, we are not going to like let anyone else like just run it for us. That's not how this works. We have to have some sort of control over it because we are taking responsibility. Like you, you guys put your addresses in there. Also, that's the other thing. Please complete the addresses as full. Yeah, it's a lot. And we want to do this because it's something that like our community we've done since basically our first I guess it'd be like our second Halloween because we didn't do it like very first year we we started because we had just started the podcast oh no but that was like we are brand new yeah 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 Yeah, but like literally since 2019 we've done this and it was so disheartening last year like when we brought it up in the mods chat like a month ago I literally thought I was gonna break out into hives because it was just the PTSD from it everybody let's if you sign up buy your person a present send it good to go. We're out here doing our very best. We're trying. But if you have noticed on social media that we are talking about Gypsy Rose, that is because over on Patreon for Five and Up patrons, we have a bonus series happening right now. We're doing a recap over there. It is a lot of fun. So if you are wanting to support the show and listen to that, go to patreon.com backslash three spooked girls. Or also we do have other tiers. So if you join for as little as a dollar, you get one bonus episode a month. So technically our Five and Up people right now they're getting the gypsy rose series so they have like that episode a week and then they also still get the bonus the all tier episode that we do at the end of the month and on the whole backlog definitely check it out all right with that long introduction also by the way i might start putting the timestamps in the show notes i've had that requested a couple times so if you start seeing those that's what it is so if you have input on that let us know Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. We're going to go into our topic now that we've um, we've had our heart to heart about uh, <laughs> Secret Satan. <laughs> right. Okay. So today's topic is one that is very vast. We're going to talk about some haunted national parks, and I chose different locations throughout the U.S. I will say right now, if you guys have any requests for deep dives on any of these locations or other haunted national parks, please let us know on socials because I am now fascinated by this. We're going to start with the most, I feel like the most stereotypical one. We're going to start the Grand Canyon. Now, the Grand Canyon has a lot, and this would definitely be one to deep dive in. They have so many weird occurrences, hauntings, all kinds of things. And they have had almost 900 people that have died within the Grand Canyon's boundaries since the 1800s, including a really horrific plane crash in 1956. This killed 128 people. Damn. So there's a lot of uh, ghosts and stuff hanging around. And one of the articles I was reading talks about a woman named Marjorie Slim Woodruff. And she is described as a naturalist. And she has been all around the Grand Canyon for the last 50 years and knows all these stories and everything. And she's had her own experiences. So she said one time when her and a friend were backpacking, they heard footsteps outside side of their tent, but there had been no other campers, no other hikers. They like went deep into the back country, like the very back of the park type of thing. And then, you know, they looked out and they didn't see anybody. Another time, and I'm like, oh my God, this is like so Blair Witch coded. After joining a gathering inside the Shrine of Ages multi-purpose building on the rim, Marjorie and a different ranger were hanging out and they heard music playing in another room. But when they went into there, no one was there and she said that they just like they got the fuck out and they left she literally says 
I wasn't going to check it out any further. And I'm like, good for you, Marjorie. That's why you're still alive. <laughs> Marjorie's smart. Take her advice. Right. Now, this area, their biggest ghost story is a woman in white story, of course. And the story is that there was a young woman who traveled here with her husband and their son shortly after the Grand Canyon Lodge was built in 1928. The husband and son had left for a hike on Transept Trail, which travels from the lodge to the North Rim campground, but the mom stayed behind. The father and son got caught up in a storm during this hike, and unfortunately, they lost their footing and fell to their deaths. Oh, no. The mom is said to be dressed in a white dress with blue flowers, had searched all up and down the trail once they didn't return, and eventually confirmed that they died, and she commits suicide at the lodge. Oh. Yeah. Visitors have reported hearing sounds of a crying woman along the trail, while others have said they've actually seen her ghost in that white dress with those blue flowers, the same ones that she had worn and carried the day she was looking for her family. Now, the Grand Canyon Lodge burned to the ground in 1932, and some people who were there during that time reported seeing a woman's face in the flames. That's really scary. She out there just burning buildings. Yes, and other people have said they have heard a woman screams and they believe it is her. But some people who are skeptical of this do point out that there are mountain lions and whatnot in this area. So, you know, people always got to try to debunk stuff. So the screaming could be mountain lions, but if they are, don't get near them, obviously. And I'm like, no shit. (laughs) Now, there is another ghost on a different trail. And his name is John Wesley Powell, and he's said to be in the belly of the canyon at Phantom Ranch. This ranch is over 101 years old, and it's built on a plateau just above the river, and it has a handful of cabins and bunkhouses surrounded by a larger lodge. So stones from Bright Angel Creek were used as pillars for the building, which kind of blends in with the surrounding there, and they considered this to be park architecture. I'm like, that's cute. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. So uh, John Wesley Powell voyaged through the Grand Canyon by boat in 1869, and his expedition rested in the very spot at the base of stone huts built by ancient Puebloans. Powell was a one-armed Civil War hero whose Grand Canyon expeditions helped him fill the last unknown swaths of the American West. He did not meet his end there, though. He died elsewhere, but his ghost haunts Phantom Ranch and Phantom Creek. And apparently there is also reports from Marjorie as well. She said that there's stories of a redheaded woman who comes up to people near the ranch and says, I don't know how to get out of here and then just vanishes. How scary. (laughs) Right? I'm like, oh my fucking God. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. So now we're going to scoot over and we may have talked about this. So we're going to talk about the Great Smoky Mountains in North Carolina and Tennessee. So one of the most popular things that happens here is there's floating orbs. This national park was established in 1940 and it says that it protects one of the most biodiverse landscapes in the world. The mountains inside the park have been inhabited for centuries by the native Cherokees and later by farmers and families who worked in small mill towns tucked into the valleys. And thousands of people have left their homes when the park was created, and there are remnants of those communities from churches to home sites to cemeteries, all in this park. Now, one of the things that they bring up is ghost lights or orbs. These end up flashing super bright, and they pop up. They could be seen at Thomas Divide Ridge there inside the park. And you can see them to this day from the Thomas Divide Overlook, which is at mile 464 on Blue Ridge Parkway. And scientists have tried to research this and find some kind of logical explanation. And they have guessed that there are electric charges from the granite deposit in the mountains, but there's no definitive answer. And you can see these type of light phenomena on other spots around the world, including the Brown Mountain Lights in nearby Pisgah National Forest. So that's fun. 
Many people have reported on this. There's a guy named Steven. He is the owner of the Appalachian Adventure Company. And he says that he grew up near Thomas Divide Ridge. And he said that, you know, he saw the lights himself. He said, quote, the lights would appear and sometimes they'd flow up into thin air. Sometimes they'd sink into the valley. Sometimes they'd flash. They didn't seem to have any rhyme or reason. But there are quite a few different lights in this area. Maybe it's balls of methane gas, or maybe it's a ball of lightning, or maybe there's something super supernatural. Some people believe this whole area is mystical, which I know the like mimics and all kinds of scary shit. (gasps) Scary. To scoot away from scary, there's also believed to be a friendly ghost here at this national park. So that's cool. Before the park was established, it said that there was a young girl from a local settlement who got lost in the woods in that area. And the area where she was lost now is Lake Fontana. And her father went looking for her, but died during the search. And according to the story, his spirit appears in the form of a glowing light along the north shore of Lake Fontana. And he tries to guide lost hikers back to safety because of his daughter disappearing. Oh, that's so nice. I know. And this area of the park is said to have a number of abandoned communities and cemeteries. One of the articles I read, there was a person talking about how they went there and they didn't see any floating lights but it definitely had like a weird feeling to it for sure which I'm like yeah definitely and another area that you can see these floating lights is the Noland Creek Trail there's been tons of reports there so that's another place you can check out if you happen to go to that national park this next one creep me out because I don't like caves and because I just recorded recently with our friends on the Up All Night podcast and we talked about the Descent movie (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like, no. So we're going to head over to Mammoth Cave National Park, and this is in Kentucky. This is the largest known cave system in the world with 426 miles of mapped terrain. That is crazy. That is. Artifacts have been found inside of the cave to suggest that people have been exploring Mammoth for thousands of years, and scientists are still discovering new passageways and new underground rooms even today. Like, isn't that crazy? It's just so big. It just keeps going. Before it became a national park in 1941, it originally was a saltpeter mine during the War of 1812. Then it was bought from some rich people and was privately owned and used as a tourist attraction, which I'm like, smart. And then it, for a brief time, was a tuberculosis clinic. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and the patients lived underground for like months. There's even still a couple of the patient cabins still inside the cave. Interesting. Right? So also during when people were exploring these caves in the 18 and 1900s, the early uh, 18 and 1900s, they found mummified remains of Native Americans that they had dated back to 445 BC. Wow. Yeah. Also, in the early 1800s, this guy named, who's like an explorer, his name was Stephen Bishop, he discovered a species of blind albino fish in the cave. I mean, they found like fucking whale that was like in the middle of like, what is it, Montana or something? Yeah, something crazy. It's just so interesting. Throughout modern history, there has been tons of reports of apparitions, one of them being the person Floyd Collins, who was said to be a caver who discovered many of the rooms that the visitors can now explore. But he was trapped by a rock inside the cave in 1925. Oh, damn. Colin died after two weeks stuck. He was literally stuck for two weeks and then he finally died. They tried to do like ton of rescue attempts and it just unfortunately was not successful. Some say his ghost keeps cavers from getting lost or getting injured in the caves. Like, oh, I like that. Right. Other ghosts that have been reported are believed to be patients that may have passed away in the tuberculosis cabins that they had down there because people have heard coughing. They have been reported to have been shoved when no one is around. And a bunch of people have also reported seeing a ghostly figure standing on a rock in a room called Chief City and that this was the ghost of a man who wore a distinctive hat with a drooping brim that was common among early guides and explorers. It was funny because in one of the interviews, they were like, other guides mentioned seeing other things, but we don't talk about it because we like to stick to facts. And I'm like, oh, God, what is down there? What is down there? (laughs) You can't do that. 
can't. You can't just be like, well, there's this other thing that possibly, but we're not going to talk about it. Yeah. So that lady, she like basically is a skeptic and said she never experienced anything herself in that she thinks people's imaginations get the best of them. Like most skeptics will say, the cave has been described as gloomy, grand, and peculiar. It's dark and unfamiliar. I mean, yeah, and you can go to do tours here if you want. There's one, there's a lantern tour that's only $25 a person. And I'm like, that's pretty cheap for a tour like that. Mm -hmm. So if you're brave enough, no, you can absolutely go check that out. Don't want to be underground. Also, like, if you're underground, like, you're already going to be disorientated. Yeah. And you're going to be like, every noise is going to be amplified. So I can see the skeptics like point of view. Mm -hmm. Now, another one we're going to go to, we're going to go over to California and talk about Death Valley National Park. Uh Oh, so the main consensus that I found when researching Death Valley is that Death Valley is weird. (laughs) 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 It's described as having extreme temperatures and vast expanses of desert, but there's also stones that move on their own. So at the racetrack Playa, a dry lake bed between the cotton and last chance ranges, stones large and small slide across the valley floor, leaving trails in the sand. Scientists have researched into this for decades and can find no logical explanation, though about 10 years ago, while using GPS and weather monitoring equipment, researchers developed a theory that the combination of ice, sunlight, rain, and high winds creates a scenario where the stones could feasibly be pushed across the firm but muddy surface of the former lake. Now, I like to think that ghosts are like, seeing who could throw them the farthest. (laughs) Uh, There's tons of ghost towns in this area as well. One of the more popular ones is Panamint, which is said to be founded by outlaws who found silver while hiding from law enforcement. They decided to give up their uh, hoodlum ways and settle down so they could mine silver and created a town. Unfortunately, would be destroyed by a flash flood in 1876. Some of the building's ruins remain and the mines still stand in the hills. Now, another popular one that's brought up is Skidoo. And this is where 1908 Hooch Simpson was hanged twice. Once for killing a banker and the second time in a stage event after he died. So the newspapers could photograph him. Like, not surprised, but that is just so horrifying to say out loud. I mean, it tracks. Yeah. So according to True West Magazine, the residents dug him up for the second hanging. Ew. But what's weird is, by most accounts, he was described as a fairly respectable businessman, but he was, you know, convicted for murder after shooting that banker and stealing $20, which obviously back then is like a lot more money, but still not even like that much money. Let's be honest. No. And after they uh, put him back up on display, the town doctor cut his head off, apparently looking for signs of syphilis. I don't think that doctor knows what he's doing. I think that doctor is just like, I want to cut this dude's head off. Yeah. He was like, oh, there has to be some explanation for why he turned into having erratic behavior and did this. So it is said that the headless ghost of Hooch Simpson still wanders the area to this day looking for his head. I mean, rightfully so. Some person was like, I'm going to do an experiment. Right. So the Goldwell Open Air Museum is said to be next to the skeletal buildings of Rhyolite Ghost Town. And this is a large scale sculpture that was installated by a group of Belgian artists that's completed with ghostly figures wearing white cloaks. So that's creepy. And there's also Tonopah, which I feel like we've talked about. I feel like we maybe did like a haunted hotel or something from here because that town name is Mm -hmm. very familiar. They had a big fire and also a pneumonia outbreak in 1905 and then 1911, and their graves are all marked with wooden tombstones. This area is said to have the ghost of George Devil Davis, who was a local saloon owner and just very popular with everybody in town, but he was shot by his wife while he was playing craps. So he must have been stepping out. Also, she probably was like, I said no more craps. Right. She's like, motherfucker, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. I'm done with you. And there's a ton more ghosts there, obviously. So to wrap us up, we have one more. We're going to head over to Indiana. And this is the Indiana Dunes National Park. They have a very specific ghost named Diana of the Dunes. Indiana Dunes protects 15 miles of coastline butting up against Lake Michigan. The landscape here is beaches, tall dunes, sand, you know, sand dunes, all that stuff. Now, they also have a woman ghost who walks the dunes at night. 
People say that this ghost, she's very, very polite. So the story goes, Diana of the Dunes, aka, which I'm like, how did you get Diana when her name is said to be Alice Mabel Gray? They were looking for a good alliteration. They're like, oh, totally, totally. I can appreciate that. (laughs) (laughs) So the story goes that she lived by herself in a shack for almost a decade in the early 1900s in the area that's now the National Park. And she had studied at the nearby University of Chicago and worked for the U.S. Naval Observatory after graduating. But she decided she wanted to go live her life off the grid and live in the dunes and just, you know, do her own thing. She said to only have brought a blanket, cup, knife, and gun. She was also fond of skinny dipping in Lake Michigan. Ward got out and journalists began to document her alternate lifestyle because, you know, this would have been such the scandal back in the day. So this made her Diana of the Dunes after the Roman goddess of the hunt. Oh. Yes. And she was an advocate for protecting the dunes and even wrote stuff for local newspapers and whatnot. And she lived in the dunes throughout her adult life. And she ended up getting with this guy named Paul Wilson, who most people said was not a good guy. He was a very violent individual who people had suspected of murder. But they got together and they had two kids. And according to Park Service, she died in her home in the dunes after giving birth to her second child. Aww. Hikers and beachgoers have reported seeing her naked al- running along the sand and disappearing into the water. She doesn't cause any problems. She doesn't bother anybody. She basically just like is frolicking around living her best life. I love that for her. And I read a couple different interviews from people who work there and everyone loves this ghost so much. They embrace Alice in this whole thing. They have a whole hiking loop that you can take that's after her. I love that. Right? It's called Diana's Dare. So it's only a mile and a half. And it says it'll take you from West Beach, which is on the edge of Lake Michigan, up a series of steps through Sandy Pine Forest to the top of Diane's Dune. From it, you can see downtown Chicago, which is more than 30 miles away. And you have the best chance of seeing her running for the water. And they say, do this hike at night. I love that. Right? I'm like, oh my God, let's do that. I want to go. I'm in. If you didn't know the lore of the area, you would be like, oh my God, I was out hiking and I saw a naked woman running to the lake. Skinny dipping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're like, I'm traumatized. And they're like, oh no, that was a ghost. And then it's a whole other trauma. Right. Exactly. So yeah, that is going to go ahead and wrap up my little roundup of haunted national parks for today. If you guys have any encounters while while visiting any national parks, we'd love to know. That'd be awesome for listeners, I think, for sure. And if there's any other haunted national parks you guys want to hear about, let us know. Let us know. For sure, Zs. But with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Toodles. <laughs>